Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so you may recall I recently compared the new Radeon RX 560 head to head with Nvidia's GeForce GTX 1050 in an epic 30 game battle. Overall performance was very competitive, though the 1050 did come out just on top and it also used slightly less power and that made it my preferred option. That said though, if you had a free sync monitor or you plan to get one in the near future, the RX 560 would probably be the smarter choice. Anyway, if you have $100 US or about 170 Australian to spend, should you even consider one of these new entry level graphics cards or should you opt for something a little more worn in? Of course, the advantage of buying new, you get things such as a warranty, and those certainly come in handy at times, and you do get support for all the latest features, things such as DirectX 12, for example. But what if you could buy 2012's second-in-command Radeon HD 7950, which was $450 US back in 2012, obviously it no longer sells for nearly that much. Uh, last month they were seen selling on eBay for about $70 US or $100 Aussie. Of course, pricing has gone up, as is the case with all GPUs at the moment, thanks to miners. Uh, I suppose that's good news for those of you who held on to your old graphics card, because you can now sell it for a handsome profit. Anyway, before too long, pricing will correct, and in fact, you might even be able to get a 7950 for a price previously unheard of, and if that is the case, should you consider the 5-year-old GPU, or just get a current generation entry-level GPU instead? That's what I plan to find out in this video. Anyway, enough about mining. There'll no doubt be plenty of reading material in the comment section complaining about it, so I don't need to pour on. I've tested the Radeon HD 7950 in 8 games and provided some nice graphs for you guys to quickly compare the results to the RX 560 and GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti. But before we get to that, here is some gameplay footage of the 7950 playing popular esports titles such as Overwatch, CSGO and Rocket League. While watching the footage, I'll rattle on a bit about the history of the 7950, and then we'll get to the graphs. So, how does the old HD 7950 compare to the new RX 560? Well, the 7950 is built upon the first generation GCN architecture, while the RX 560 is a fourth gen part. It's pretty crazy to think, but you could almost fit three RX 560 dies in the same space that a single 7950 die occupies, and yet despite that, the 560 only has around 30% fewer transistors. Having said all that though, the 7950 does pack a massive 75% more cores and texture addressing units. However, the cores do operate at roughly a 60% greater frequency for the RX 560. Still, when it comes to the memory subsystem, the 7950 has a massive advantage here thanks to a really beefy 384-bit wide memory bus, enabling a bandwidth of 240GB per second. That's more than twice that of the 560. I should also note that two years after its release, the 7950 was rebranded as the Radeon R9 280 and sold for $250 US. The core was slightly overclocked, but essentially performance remained much the same. So the numbers you're about to see will also reflect what the R9 280 is capable of. Anyway, on paper at least, the 7950 looks as though it'll be able to take the current generation entry level parts to the cleaners. Of course, real world gaming performance often tells a different story when it comes to comparing new and old hardware. So let's go see how they stack up on our Ryzen 5 1400 test system with 8GB of DDR4 2666 memory. The Radeon HD 7950 gets off to a reasonable start, beating out both the RX 560 and GTX 1050 in Mass Effect Andromeda at 1080p using the medium quality preset. Here we see an average of 58 FPS, which is plenty for smooth gameplay, so a good result. Let's move on to see how Battlefield 1 plays. Please note this game was tested using the ultra quality preset, and I have to admit this is a little too taxing on performance. Ideally gamers will want to run with the high or medium quality settings. As a result we do see the 7950 struggling here, and despite the many cores and superior bandwidth it does fall behind the GTX 1050 and RX 560. So these results are unexpected given what we've seen so far. Testing with Resident Evil 7, the 7950 played very well, spitting out 72 FPS on average, making it not just faster than the RX 560 and GTX 1050, but also the 1050 Ti. So a very solid result for the old 7950 here. Moving to Dirt 4, I was quite surprised to see a minimum of 53 FPS for the 7950, as the game played very well. Of course, 53 FPS is still very high for this kind of game, but with such a massive disparity between the 1% minimum and average frame rate, you might expect noticeable stuttering now and then. Anyway, the game played very well. That said, the 7950 was still slower than the RX 560. The numbers in For Honor were more or less what we're expecting to see. The 7950 edged ahead of the RX 560 for the average frame rate, though the minimum was a little on the low side. Anyway, both were a good bit slower than the GTX 1050 in this title. 
For Honor is a game that plays well on most PC hardware, while Prey is a game that plays exceptionally well even on low-end or dated hardware, as we can see here. The 7950 churned out an impressive 59 FPS on average, and although that made it quite a bit slower than the GTX 1050, performance was still excellent. Performance was also excellent in Dawn of War 4, and here we see the 7950 taking out both the RX 560 and GTX 1050 graphics cards with an impressive 55 FPS. In fact, it wasn't much slower than the GTX 1050 Ti, so a great result for the 5-year-old GPU here. The last game I'm going to look at is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, and this is a seriously demanding title, so I've been forced to use the lowest possible quality preset. Even with the low quality settings in place, the 7950 was good for just 49 FPS, though the 39 FPS minimum was quite good. Still, even so, the 7950 doesn't look to be that well optimised for this title. Capping things off, we have the power consumption figures, and I'm actually surprised with how well the 7950 does here. Obviously, it's operating at a much lower clock speed when compared to the RX 560 and GTX 1050, but with significantly more cores on the 28 nanometer process, the results aren't that bad. Total system consumption peaked at just 197 watts, and that's only 15% more than the RX 560. The 7950 certainly isn't a power pig as I sort of expected it to be, at least in relation to these current generation entry level GPUs. So it appears as though the old Radeon HD 7950 is actually very close to the RX 560 and GTX 1050 when it comes to modern gaming performance. That said though, the results were a bit mixed, so what does an 8 game average look like? Let's go find out. Well, there you have it. Overall, the 7950 and RX 560 do deliver a similar experience. Though, of course, as I just said, the results will vary depending on the game. I'd say it's a lack of driver optimization for some of the newer titles that's probably holding the 7950 back ever so slightly. But given it is a five-year-old GPU now and it is based on the first-generation GCN architecture, you can hardly blame AMD for not fully optimizing for this older GPU. Having said that though, the performance was smooth and stability was excellent, so given the GPU's advanced age, that was great to see. If I came across a cheap 7950, I wouldn't hesitate to snap one up for a budget build, especially if I was playing games such as Counter-Strike or Rocket League, for example. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. If you liked the video, please take a moment to help us out and hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and remember, hit that notification bell if you'd like to be notified of our videos as they go live. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys. Thank you.